Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Unity UTG 4082A. This is an 80 megahertz, 500 mega samples per second, two channel arbitrary waveform generator. This thing's got an 8 inch screen on it and it does so much. Let me uh, pull it out here and give you a look around the back. This is where things get really interesting and make this a really professional piece of equipment. Oops. Tilt this up here a little bit so you guys can get a better look. We have clock source in, clock source out, frequency counter, frequency frequency shift keying trigger trigger, modulation in, USB connection, and a LAN connection. So you can operate this thing completely remote with say um, like a GPS disciplined 10 megahertz clock source and then feed that clock source out to all of your instrumentation. That's what goes on in actual engineering labs with a single source for all your clocks. That way all of your equipment is together at one clock speed. And then you know that your readings are just a lot more accurate. All right, let's take a look at some of the uh, front panel controls here, starting with the uh, soft switch power supply button. Uh, this thing is capable of accepting 100 to 240 volts, obviously. But here's what I found interesting. At a frequency of 45 hertz to 440 hertz. Wherever you at in the world, does your country use 440 hertz electricity? I'm, I am unfamiliar with that. So moving down, we have a little USB interface here. Now this guy supports U-Discs, FAT16, FAT32, up to 32 gigs. The USB interface can be used to read waveform data in or to save it. Real nice. Now this little guy here, take a look at him. That is your protocol interface. It looks like the, like the size of a... Um, old school Atari joystick port but it's different you can see there are quite a few pins in there and I am unfamiliar with that type of connector and interface so if you guys know what that's called let me know down below but what you can whoops, what you can do with that is it will accept RS-232 I, I squared C and spy interface to input or output any 16-bit um, arbitrary waveform so that's pretty cool it's basically a digital interface as opposed to the uh, analog interfaces over here so we have channel 1 and a sync channel you can see here it is labeled 50 ohms and it says BNC 42 volts peak to ground so this can output up to 42 volts then we have channel 2 and its corresponding uh, sync input as well. Now we've got a really, really rich interface over here. And pay particular attention to this uh, nice soft switch here. See how it's labeled on this side? It's red for channel one, and over here it's blue for channel two. Well, what this is, is basically your sync key. And it can do um, a couple of different things. You can make channel 1 equal to channel 2, channel 2 equal to channel 1, or swap channel 2 and channel 1. And all of those things can be set up over here in the utility menu, which is really nice. That's a great feature. Now, we come over here. These are our four system function keys for our presets, storage, utility menu, and the help menu, which is really nice and rich. You can find all sorts of different things that you don't know what's, if you don't know what's going on. Now, in the utility menu is where you can set up different things for your channels. You can invert signals. You can sync them. You can change your load from high Z to low Z, amplitude limits, everything you see here. 
we have our clock in out channel now here's our thing the channel one to two copy this is where you can set up what's going on so one to two copy uh, two to one copy and swap them back and forth so you've got all that great functionality there for you as well now up here we have our setup buttons we have a user setup Oops, let me get back to the main menu here. So you see down here, when I press the user setup, it brings up this menu. And we can select any of these by using the soft keys here. And then this takes you back to our main menu. Underneath it, we have different modes. We can do modulation, sweep, and burst. And we'll come back to that later. Down here, we have waveforms and you will get a uh, demonstration of each one. So let's go, channel one is active now. Let me slide you over here so you can see it. You can see the on, now it's off. Limit is off, high Z is on, and our wave is square wave. But if I press one of the other buttons, now we have a sine wave, square wave, ramp wave, pulse, noise, then we have our different arbitrary waves. We'll come back to them. We have some harmonics, and then we have a straight up DC. That works on either channel. You can come in here and you can change between whatever your two selections on the menu buttons are, frequency and period. See, now it says period, and over here we are in period. Now we're back to frequency. Over here we have amplitude. We switched our uh, on and off. Then we have an offset. We can turn offset on and off. And phase, we can control our phase. So we get two different phases between the two. And I'll show you that as well as we go through there. Also on here is the numeric keypad, which you can use to enter any values. An encoder. And like uh, I would call this your decimal mover. I'll show you, I'll show you what that all does. So let's come over here, see if I can zoom out far enough to get you a complete view. Yeah, almost. There we go, okay. So let's pick channel one and set a 10 megahertz square wave. So channel one is off. Square wave. We wanna set our frequency. So I'm just gonna come over here to the numeric key keypad and say 10 megahertz. That was millihertz. Don't make that mistake. So now we have a 10 megahertz square wave at 1.061 VRMS. We have zero offset, zero phase, and a 50% duty cycle. So let's say we wanna change our amplitude and make it three volts peak to peak. I hit the amplitude button. I compress that. There's a three, hit peak to peak. So now we are at three volts peak to peak. And again, if we wanted to offset it, there's our offset. We can use the encoder to roll down to the offset and say we want to offset it by two volts. So now we have our square wave, three volts peak to peak, offset by two volts. Same thing with the phase. We want to change our phase. Let's make it, uh, well, there she goes, 90 degrees right there with a 50% duty cycle. So let's hook it up and uh, we'll get a look at it. This is on 50 ohms. We can set the uh, oscilloscope at 50 ohms as well. Connect up those BNCs. Let me find a different place for the camera so you can see more and see better. All right. Let's hook up our BNCs here. All right, channel one probe. be one X good and channel one on with the auto set here and we'll get a view of this nice waveform all right so we're reading 9.999983 megahertz well friends and neighbors that is 
awfully, awfully close to 10 megahertz that I would not worry about it. And our peak to peak, why is our peak to peak saying? Six volts should say three volts. Probe is at one X. That's interesting. Point one. Oh, millivolts. I haven't had enough time to mess with this scope to figure all that stuff out yet, but, uh, whoops. So there is our 10 megahertz square wave. I can switch that to a sine wave quite easily. Ramp wave. Pulse. Just noise. There's one of the arbitraries. This is a stair step. Let's see if I can't, uh. Clean that up a little bit. Ooh, no, it's even worse. All right, let's see display. Okay, not there. All right. Probably this crappy cable I'm using. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, let's hook up channel two. So channel 2 connecting up here. We'll turn channel 2 on. Whoops, zoom up here so you can see channel 2. Channel 2 is now on. And I'm going to hit the old button here to make them the same. Oh, channel 3, that's why I'm not seeing anything. All right, now we'll hit the auto set again. And channel two, probe, that's one X. Interesting. There we go. Then we can set our voltages the same. So now, let's see if I can come out further. Maybe you can see more. That's what I'm trying to get here. Hang on one second. All right, here's a little better view. You can kind of see everything almost in the picture. So what I was getting at is if I come over here, switch into sine wave, do my sync thing. Channel one, let's, let's make it a ramp wave. Channel two, we'll make it a square wave. Now we can play with our phase. Now watch channel two. So channel two is now 90 degrees out of phase with channel one. Let me swap back over here to channel one. Now they are close to in phase. And again, I can hit the button, and they both become the same waveform again. So really nice controls, really great. If you need uh, two signals, put them out of phase so you can see how a, a certain circuit or signal is working. Really, really nice stuff here. Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Unity UTG 4082A. This is an 80 megahertz, 500 mega samples per second, two channel arbitrary waveform generator. This thing's got an eight inch 